that the shorter the service, the more the people love the messenger. Have you ever heard that before? Never heard that before? Because it's so close to lunchtime. And so the shorter service is, shorter service is the quicker they get to make it to their favorite meals. Especially back in the days when they had a hometown buffet and they had the meals between a certain time, you know, like, come on, pastor, preacher, yeah, amen. Okay, pastor, you're going to way too long. You got to hurry up and cut it off and the angry looks, the hot breaths, and, you know, I've been there. Trust me, I'm, I'm talking about myself on honesty. I talk too much. Praise God. This morning, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 this morning. I believe that we're in a time where we have to look more in what God's doing with us and at the same time <clears throat> how he's doing it with us and how he's doing it with, through us. And a lot of times we can get distracted and we tend to look at everything else but ourselves. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1, it goes on to say, Judge not that you, not, that you be not judged. For with that, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. See, Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. And I pray, God, let your word come out with clarity and understanding. I pray any distractions right now, Lord, that we cast them aside and we give you our attention this morning, Lord. Help us and teach us, Lord, on your word. And help, it, help us to be able to... Enable it within our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is easy to look at and to judge others when you're not in their shoes. When we judge others, sometimes we don't know on how we come across. We don't know how we're speaking it. Somebody, and sometimes we leave them in a place of feeling condemned. We, feel, we leave them in a place of feeling unfit. Why? Because most of the people, a lot of people that have been in church and then out of church and then come back to church, there's always something in common. A couple things that are in common. One, they fell back in sin. Two, they got hurt in church. Three, they got hurt in church. And a lot of people get hurt in church nowadays. Why? Because... Everyone is so eager to bring in correct, correction. Everyone is so eager to change somebody. Now, this is a good thing, but yet at some times we come across judgmental and we end up killing the brother. We end up killing the sister in their faith. And we try to do about it within our own hearts, doing the right thing. But sometimes it just comes off way wrong, especially when we're on this, this, this holy high horse. We're, we're, we're very spiritual. We're, we're, we're in deep prayer with God that morning. And we come to church that morning and we're giving everybody a word. And it's not even God that's speaking through you. It's your emotions. It's your heart. It's what you're feeling. But it's not what the person needs. The person may be struggling, but you come across as God says, you need to deal with that. Yeah, but there's a way of doing it in love. There's a way the scripture says. That he is there with you and that he will strengthen you. And we have to learn in how we talk, not only to each other, but to those that are surrounding us. Because they're always listening to what we got to say. If, and, and at most times, they're going to pretend that they're, that they're not listening to you. But when they hear your name, they're listening to every word you got to say because they want to stick it to you. They want to know what you're all about. Verse 3 it says, and why, do you, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrites, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Because when you have issues, you cannot do it right with your brother. When you have issues going on in your life, you look at everyone else's issue but your own. It's so much easier, easier to live this way because you're not having to face reality. It can be easy to see your brother or your sister struggles 
and take your eyes off yourself and then put it on their problems. A lot of us can be in that place today. A lot of us can be in that place of where a lot of things are going bad and things are not picking up right, but we look at someone else that's maybe in a worse situation to make ourselves seem like, you know what, we're stronger than them or we're better than them or let me help you out in this area. But yet we can seek God for them for change, but we won't seek it for ourselves. Have you ever been there before? I've been there. I've been there. I had a bunch of issues, a lot of issues, but I see a brother dealing with a little sin. And I'm over there, man, bro, you could be delivered, and God can change you, and God can do this, and God can do that. But yeah, I wasn't going to pray with God about myself. I didn't want to face the facts. I didn't want to face myself and look in the mirror and say, you know what, you have a lot of issues there, bro. The man in the mirror, we all heard that. We don't like looking at that person in the mirror because we know all the ugliness that they tend to hide. We know all the dirty secrets that that person in the mirror tends to hide. That person in the mirror is not as truthful as they are with everyone else. In Romans this morning, Romans chapter 15, verse 1, it says, We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. That means those of us that are strong to help those that are weak, to lift them up, to edify. Not everyone's in the same place as, as you and I are today. Somebody's doing awesome and somebody's just barely hanging in there. It's up for us to go in there and encourage, to edify, to give the word of God. Leave it, at, leave it, at, leave it within their hands and leave it to them whether they're going to eat it or they're going to just save it for later on. Because if we ever try to shove the word of God into someone's, into someone's life, they're just going to shut it out. They're going to shut it out and say, you know what, I don't want to deal with it. Not only don't I want to deal with that, but I don't want to deal with your attitude because of the way you're trying to change my life. Have you ever been there? Someone comes up in your life and they're trying to tell you what's right from wrong and you're just like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not ready there, but you're telling me everything that I need to do and you're telling me that I need to do it. That's a turnoff. But see, if we have it, that means we're going to have the fruit of the Spirit going through our lives. We're going to be able to work with each other. We're going to be able to encourage each other. We're going to be able to love on one another. And we're talking about God's love this morning. We're not talking about our own love. Because our own love only lasts for so little of a time. Our love gets angry. Our love gets frustrated. Our love doesn't want to deal with anything. We get short, tempered, little patience. Verse 6, it goes on to say, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. See, there are those that are just not willing to receive the word of God. Have, have you ever testified to someone? You're given a, a, a testimony to someone, they're just like, you know what, I don't believe in God. I, I, I don't want that. I don't desire that. And that's okay because they're not ready yet. Scripture says that one day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day. But until then, we're just called to preach into the nations. We're just called to be a testimony unto the Lord. Those that are not willing to receive God's word are the ones that the scripture is talking about. They tend to bite the hand that feeds them. Have you ever worked with someone, a disciple, or someone, someone that you're close to, and you work with them, and all of a sudden they turn on you? They want to bite your hand. They want to badmouth you. They want to talk and say all these bad things about you that aren't even true. See, this is how the world is. This isn't the type of society that we live in. But we must understand that this is going to take place. This will happen in our lives. But as it happens, do not lose encouragement. Gain encouragement. Why? Because you're able to do it for so long. 
and this. Let the Lord strengthen you through this. Why? Because it's only through the Lord that we will receive our strength. See, God still gets the glory in this. Why? Because there was a seed that was planted. Even though it may have been for a short time that they received the word, even though it was a, for a short time that they acknowledged God, it was that short time that God only needed for something to take place in that person's life sooner or later. But it's not up for us to determine when that's going to take place. So when we, we, before we become judgmental, we must become to know the word of God and to love others. And this is what we're coming to this morning. Because when we see someone in the hooks, like it's like going fishing. You, you, the fish is biting. You, the fish is already on your hook, right? And then you want to make sure that, fo- that fish is going to stay on your hook. So what do you do? Wham, you said it again. In Christianity, sometimes it can be this way. We, 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 we are witnessing to somebody. We're winning them over. But yeah, we just want to yank the jaws out of that fish. And then that, that fish ends up getting hurt. Or, or the fish ends up swallowing a hook, and you have to pull it out, and you, you yank the guts out with it, and the fish is dead. We end up killing believers in their belief, in their faith. We're critical on the way that we love people, rather than loving people in God's word, in God's ways. Now we're going to move over to verse 21 this morning. Verse 21. And then goes on to say, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. See, in all of this, we're talking about those that are out there that are just doing God's work, that are digging in, that are just not giving up. We're talking about working with people this morning on how to take care of them and how to nurture them on how what not to do and what can hurt them. But then there are some that scripture says in Jesus' own words, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father, of my Father in heaven. Let's turn to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 21. It says, But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. And do it. Because it's easy to listen. It's easy to take in the word. We can, we can do I did that in school. Did I pass a class? I didn't pass a class because I was just taking in whatever the teacher was teaching me. It sounded good, but that was it. I just went to go fill in a seat, but I failed the class. The same thing with Christianity, same thing with our faith. When we come to church, it's not to come to church just to fill the seats. It's not to say, I just went to go hear the preacher preach, and now I feel like I'm fulfilled. See, our lives are called to come into church to receive the word of God and apply it to our lives. Why? So that we can take it and let it grow from us, let it grow within us, so that God can be glorified through it all. It's easy to tell others on what to do and what not to do. But do we ourselves follow through? This is, this is the bullet we got to bite. Do we follow through ourselves? Everything that we're telling our family, our friends, coworkers, everything that we're telling them about our testimony, about what we do, about what we stand for, are we actually following suits? Are we doing it, boy, because they watch? They're in the world. If they don't see you at work, they turn to social media and look you up. What are they doing over the weekend? How are they handling their weekend, huh? Oh, but I better go home and put my, my Facebook, my Instagram on privacy mode. Whoa, they haven't posted for a year. Yeah, because they blocked you, bro. 
there's some things that they don't want you to see. But that draws in curiosity. When you talk about God, when you talk about Jesus, people want to know, are you fake or are you for real? They want to know this. They're not going to follow you. They're not going to hold your hand. They go to the internet. They scope you out. Is this person legit? Is this person all that they say that they are? Because sometimes we can become hard of hearing and hard of doing, especially when it gets tough, especially when our pride rises up and we don't want to hear nothing at all, especially correction. Why? Because correction faces the issue and it brings correction. And sometimes we don't want to hear that. We don't want to acknowledge that. We want to stay clear away from that. See, when we say we pray every day and every night, that means you're praying every day and every night. Well, what's the definition of prayer? Definition of prayer is saying that you're going to that secret place, that you're praying and you're seeking the Lord, and that you're having intimacy with Him. He's, you're seeking His heart while you're letting go of your heart so that He can read you, so that He can see you, so that He can minister to you and touch you and love on you. That's prayer. Not, Father, I'm going to go to sleep tonight. Please save me and let me wake up tomorrow morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That, that's just saying, I hope I wake up tomorrow morning. Why? Because they're serving up a good meal at work. Or I'm getting ready to get paid this weekend, and I, want, I have some plans for this weekend. You want to survive for a temporary time. There's a difference between the prayer. Lord, if I ever go out of state, like for Texas, or if I go somewhere, please do not let a shark attack me when I go into the beach because I've been reading about a lot of shark attacks up close. <laughs> and not listen to the voices encourage me, say, no, it's safe to go ahead and go ahead and swim. While well, I see a fin six feet swim in front of me, six foot, ten foot hammerhead shark. I don't think so. Ladies first. <laughs> We got to remember our morals, right? <laughs> Be gentlemen. Wow. Verse 23, 22, I'm sorry. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Haven't we done all this in your name? Haven't we walked with you? Haven't we talked with you? Haven't we done miracles? Haven't, haven't they been performed? Did we not do these in your name? And then it says in verse 23, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Ouch. Have you ever had a best friend? You thought they knew them? You thought you knew them? And all of a sudden, one day, boom, they just turn on you, and you're like, wow, I've never seen that happen. I didn't see that one coming. It's happened. It happens just like that. I don't want to hear these words. I don't want to think that I'm doing God's will, and all of a sudden, God turn around and say, I never knew you. Those who practice lawlessness. Luke 12, 9. It goes on to say, but he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Who, he who denies me before men would be denied by angels before God. Why well, don't deny God? I talk about Jesus. I talk about God all the time. At work, at home, in the shower, I praise and I worship him. We do a lot of mouth service. I do this. I do that. I practice everything. But we deny Christ in our actions, in the way that we act. That means what we do physically, our responses, and the way we are 
and act out in front of others. Professing to be one way and acting another. See, we, we, can, we can write a good fairy tale about ourselves. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us can, can, can do it. But are we practicing what we preach? See, we have to be real. We have to be real, especially leaders in the church. We have to be real. Why? Because you're the target. The enemy is looking at you saying, what can I make of you? What can I do to smear your image? What can I do to smear your name? Dotting your T's, crossing your I's. I had to finish that one. Crossing your T's and dotting your I's. See, it sounded good, but it wasn't right. Sometimes you can act out that way. It sounds good, but it's not coming out right. It's not looking right. Something fishy is going on. Something is not on track. Verse 24 says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who built his house on the rock. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 11 to 13. And it says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. It will be tested by fire. It will be tested by fire. Where are we building our house this morning? What type of foundation are we building our house in? Who influences you today on, in what you do? Who's the main influence in your life? Think about it for a moment. Don't, don't, be honest. You don't have to blurt it out loud. Who's the one that gives you that ultimate that's a great idea. I'm glad I always come to you for that. Who's helping you build today in your faith? Who's helping you build today in your walk with Jesus Christ? Who today is helping you out? Who are you looking to? Are we being built for success in Jesus? Or are we being built for success in the world? These are the two foundations that we're looking at this morning. What are we being, being built for success in? Because everything that is in Jesus will last as everything else fades away. As everything else fades away, whatever comes from Jesus is everlasting. Whatever comes from Christ, it will last until he calls us back. It cannot be taken away. It will not rot. It cannot be stolen. What God gives, no man can take away. No man can take away. Who are we listening to this morning? While I'm listening to so-and-so, I'm listening to a, a, a Joel Austin. I'm listening to the, to the preacher that, that, that his scripture is always off, but his, I got confirmation from him. Who are we listening to this morning? Well, if my dog barked twice, I was going to go to uh, Psalms. Or what are we looking for this morning? What are we relying on this morning? Are we relying on luck? Oh, my. What are we, what are we looking on at this morning? Are we casting lots to see what scripture we read? Are we seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, lead me to the scripture where I need to go to? Lord, lead me to this and lead me to that. 
Because in one person's eyes, they're doing what's best for you, but not what's in best for you and Jesus. And how do you know this? How, how do you know if you're listening to the right person? How do you know if you're being led in the right way? In Matthew 8, in Matthew 7, 18 through 20, which we didn't read, but I'm going to read it now. It says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. You will know them. That person that you are listening to, that is the greatest influence in your life. Look at their fruits. Where are they at? What have they done for Jesus where had they gone? Because there's always something to back it up. There's always some type of fruit in their life. Are they changing? Is the Spirit of God manifesting in them? Have they been changing more and more and more? Have they influenced you to do good? Have they influenced you to suck it up? Instead of saying, there, there, it'll pass. Let's go get something to eat and it'll be okay which I kind of like too at the same time, but I want to be fed both ways. Feed me and feed me the word of God. Because sooner or later, that food is not going to be in my stomach any longer. But the word of God is going to sustain me and it's going to keep me alive. It's going to keep me breathing. It's going to keep me strengthened. It's going to keep me going. And this is the type of person that we need to have in our lives that is influencing us. So we have to look at who we are listening to this morning. Verse 25, and it says, And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. It was founded on a rock. Psalms 139 23 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Search me, God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties. Know where I'm at today. Show me where I am at today. Let me not be fooled by what I think where I'm at but show me and expose to me so that I can know that I'm on the right foundation. Test me in these areas of my life so I know that I'm making good, round, good soundful decisions. Because we all must face that we cannot escape life. We cannot escape the problems that comes along with it. We can't escape any of the problems that come along with it. We face hardships. We face mockery. A lot, of, a lot of us face mockery, especially during football season. Man, that's why I try to stay quiet before this season even starts. What do you think the Steelers are going to do? Oh, well, got to see and we got to find out and wait. I'm going to wait for that game to pass up. But we can't escape life. We got to face it. We got to acknowledge that, you know what? It's either me by myself or me with Jesus. And I would rather be, have it be with me and the Lord. Why? Because if I start falling back, He's going to lift me back up. And then He's going to keep pushing me along the way. Trust me, we all have insecurities. We all have insecurities. We all have issues that only God can take care of. We all have them. But God's the only one that's going to take care of that. Conversations and, and friend, friend conversations, this and that, it'll make you feel good for a little bit. But God will resolve the problem. God will take care of that issue. God will deliver you from that mentality and give you something new that's permanent, that you can keep for yourself. See, what God gives, he gives us something that goes far and above and beyond than what we ever can imagine. Verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine 
and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Who built his house on the sand. How many of you have been to the beach? Most of us have. Have you ever tried holding sand in your hand? Just holding it like this and then like maybe spreading your fingers? Are you able to hold on to all that sand? No, you're not. You're not. It, it, it slips away. You're not able to hold on to it. It's like the times of life when, when the trials and tribulations hit. Those of us that are building on that sand... When life comes at you and it hits you, it's going to come and hit you hard at times. But the place that we're building our faith and our foundation and our trust and our securities, what are we building it on this morning? Have you ever stood at the beach, for those of you that have, and and the, the water comes up so high, and you just want to get your feet wet and that's just it? But the more that the water comes and it goes, it comes and it goes, it feels like you're moving, but you're not. But your feet are just sinking into the sand. See, this is what it's talking about. Trying to build something on that. When things that life are coming your way, that foundation that we try to lay it on, which is within our own selves, whatever we can think of, it just begins to wash away. That foundation is no no longer any, it wasn't even solid to begin with, but it looked nice. That, that, That idea worked great for so long. That, that desire that, that you, you had, now that you look at it two years ago, two years now, from two years ago, is not even stable where you're supposed to be at. There's a job that you, maybe you were supposed to have, like I said, two years ago, but you look at that company and it's no longer there. See, when God moves you somewhere, when God moves you to something else, something different, it's because he has a plan and purpose for you. Not only that, that means that means he's going to sustain you wherever you're at. If he puts you in a place of employment, he puts you there for a reason. Because sometimes we want to get out of that place. Why? Because we're getting headaches. Why? Because the associates are getting on your nerves. Why? Because you're feeling the pressure. Why? Because you're, you're getting stressed out. And you're wondering, okay, well, I got maybe if I look for another job, maybe it's going to take me out and I'm going to be at a better place. And God's like, no, I gave you this job. And when I tell you it's time to leave, I'll let you leave. But I put you here so that through this, you can trust me. I put you here because through this, you need to learn to know that you are able to stand, even though the, you feel like the ground is being shaken all around you. Why? Because you're standing on my foundation. You're not standing on something that was make-believe. You're not standing on something that was um, based on good feelings. You're standing on the rock, the foundation that cannot be broken. Verse 27, it says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. And great was the fall. I want to turn to John. Chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 1, it's going to be 1 through 6. It says, After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. When then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which were performed on those who were dis, who were diseased, and Jesus went up to the mount, went up on a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a few of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, "Where shall we buy bread that these may eat?" He's questioning Philip, one of his disciples. Where should we buy the bread? Where should we raise up money? What should we do so that we can get this accomplished? 
Verse 6, it says, But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. But right here in verse 6 says, But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus himself knew what he would do, but he still questioned him. He still questioned Philip. But Jesus knew what he would do. When we're, when we're in the midst of just breaking down, when we're in the midst of, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm about to tap out. I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. All these things that are taking place in my life, it, it's breaking me down. I'm making decisions that I thought I would never make. I never thought I would be speaking or talking this way, reacting this way. We have to look on what Jesus would do. Because in his disciples' own mind, even after experiencing the miracles of those that had diseases, even experiencing the miracles that had taken place in front of him with Jesus, Jesus turns back around and asks him, well, what are we, what are we going to do? Where can we buy the bread from? Hello? Didn't you just see him do a miracle? Can't you just say, well, Lord, can't you pray for it? Lord, can't you do it? Lord, you did all these miracles. Can't you, can't you give to them? But instead, he thought within his own carnal mind, his fleshly mind, and said, well, if we get this, we can make it happen. But see, Jesus is not asking us to think with our fleshly minds this morning. He's not asking us to think, what is the best scenario? Jesus is already saying, I got the best solution, but I want to ask you on what you're going to do. What are you going to do in this scenario? What are you going to do when this takes place? You already know through the past and with the times that you've walked with me on the things that I've performed even in front of you, even in, within your life. And we go to God and he asks us, well, what are you going to do? See, it's at these times we have to remember and reflect back. Well, God, if you did this and you did that and you healed me and you broke me and you mended my broken heart, then, Lord, I need you to do this. Go to him as your resource. Go to him as your provider. Go to him as your personal Lord and Savior. Why? Because he saved your soul. Well, no one else could have done it for you. Nothing in this world can ever replace that. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. This morning, encourage, let us be encouraged this morning. I know in our hearts we intent, our intention is to do good. And we always attend, attend we always want to desire to do good. But we must do it without, with the right hearts. If we're not in a place of giving something, don't share it. If you're not in that place where you're having some type of setback, that means just wait until you're ready to give it. God will give an opportunity for you. Why? Because it's that one thing that you have, that's that person that you're going to give it to, they're going to take it, whether they're going to choke on it or they're going to be able to eat it and take it and grow from it. This morning, ask the Lord, where am I at this morning? God, I need a reality check. Check my heart. Check my insecurities. Check my anxieties. Check everything about me. I want to know where I lack in. Because in that, I don't want to be caught by surprise. I want to be prepared and I want to be ready. 
I want to know on how to fight the enemy. I want to know on how to stand up on my own two feet as I stand on you. It's okay to ask the Lord in this. He's not like everyone else. He's not going to point out your issue and start laughing at you. He's not going to come in and point out your issue and say, huh. He's going to come out and meet you where you're at. And then he's going to help you and lift you up and bring you into that place where you need to be. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, this morning for your word. Father, I just pray this morning as we just go into